morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sung Eucharist for today. A couple of things just to uh, give out in addition to the pew leaflet. Um, first of all, to say that um, Sarah and Tina successfully completed their muddy race for life yesterday, so well done to them, both of them. And I'm... Thank you. <laughs> And I'm sure they'd be very grateful if you agreed to sponsor them to receive the money now. And if you haven't sponsored them and would like to make a donation, then I'm sure that will be well received. And secondly, on um, the anniversary of Coronation Day, the 2nd of June, we shall be um, having a lunch in the church centre on that day, on the Thursday, at 1230 there is a list at the back of the church if you'd like to sign up to come along to that. And uh, the lunch will be preceded by a celebration and thanksgiving service here in church at half past 11. So a moment's quiet and then we shall sing the first of our hymns this morning, number 194.
Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To stand for the Gloria. We behold your glory, O God, in the love shown by your Son, lifted up on the cross and exalted on high. Increase our love for one another, that both in name and in truth we may be disciples of the risen Lord Jesus, and so reflect by our lives the glory that is yours. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading is taken from Genesis, chapter 22, 1 to 18. God tested Abraham 
He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering. He set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife, so the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and lay wood in order. And he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then Abraham reached out his hand, took the knife and killed his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. And he said, by myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offering as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offering shall possess the gates of the, and your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies. And by your offering shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? And then Peter began to explain to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. 
At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how we had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder him, God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Here ended the lesson. We stand to sing our gospel hymn, number 454.
in the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. During the supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said, as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A night to remember. For those of my generation, a film from the 1950s of the sinking of the Titanic, starring Kenneth Moore. And that must surely have been an understatement, a night to remember for those on board sailing to New York in what was supposed to be anyway, an unsinkable ship. And I'm sure we all know what was to happen when the ship hit an iceberg. I understand that one of my ancestors from my mother's side of the family was one of the fortunate survivors. But very many, as we know, perished that night. The events recorded in today's gospel recall surely the most significant night to remember of all time. In many ways, I find it somewhat strange that those who compile our lectionary of daily and weekly readings choose this passage for a Sunday that's just four weeks after Easter, having used the same passage from St. John on Maundy Thursday. On reflection, though, it is right that during this Easter season, as we approach the celebration of our risen Lord ascending into heaven, that we recall once again the events of that last supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. Before Jesus spoke on that occasion, Judas had left that upper room in, in shame. And St. John describes this simply in just four words. And it was night. Those words may describe the timing of events, but they mean far more than that. They seem to represent the immediate future for Jesus. They are reminders of the hammer blows 
that would drive the nails through his flesh as he was pinned down to the cross. Night time, signifying the darkness that fell upon the earth as our Lord breathed his last. With Judas gone that evening, though, Jesus says simply, Now, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. This was Jesus' way of saying his goodbyes to his disciples, those men who had travelled the roads with him, as he sought to bring God's message of redemption to his people. He was about to undertake a final journey, and one that this time he will be making on his own. But the disciples would need to carry on without his physical presence. Now, saying goodbye is rarely easy. It's not so bad, of course, if you're just going into town for an hour or two. But long separations can be very hard. When we've known someone for a lengthy period, it can be hard to accept that the relationship is about to change forever if they are say to move away for perhaps a new job and I'm sure as well that there are many teachers who find it difficult to accept when pupils they have taught for several years move on to another school or to university or into employment The most difficult separation, though, is undoubtedly the one we experience in death and perhaps begins to explain why the disciples had such difficulty in accepting that Jesus was going to leave them. And so, as Jesus tried to prepare the disciples for a life without his physical presence, he gave them this final new commandment that they must love one another as he had loved them. But wasn't this to ask the impossible to love as he did would seem beyond all of us. And not just because we're not that nice. As he told the disciples, we cannot go where he is going. That way was his alone. Like the recommendations we hear in his great Sermon on the Mount, Jesus didn't provide definitive instructions on how this new commandment was to be achieved. There was no map, just a compass pointing in the right direction. So did the disciples understand what Jesus was saying to them? Probably not. They certainly couldn't comprehend how Jesus could be going somewhere without them. But what does all this mean for us and for our own relationships with our fellow human beings? Just how did Jesus love his disciples? He loved them selflessly. 
All too often, when we love, there is an element of self in it. It may be subconsciously, but we can easily be thinking of what we might get out of it ourselves. What will love do for me? But Jesus never thought like that. His only desire was to give all he had for those he loved. There was no limit to the love of Jesus. No demand was too much. If love meant the cross, that was where he was prepared to go. After all, love doesn't necessarily always bring happiness. It can also, at times, anyway, bring us pain and anguish as well. Jesus surely knew his disciples well. Having lived with them, he knew their frailties and yet, and yet was still able to love them. For us, it's often only when we live with someone that we discover not only their good qualities that attracted us to them in the first place, but also their weaknesses, their moods and irritabilities. True love is surely open-eyed. It loves not what it imagines someone to be, but who they actually are. Peter and the other disciples were to forsake Jesus in his hour of need. But although he might have been disappointed, he held nothing against them. He simply forgave them. The love that Jesus demanded of his disciples, and of course of us, is something that is all about the other person. He demonstrated this in the story of the foot washing we read of on Maundy Thursday. For true love does overflow into acts of service not to show, to show off how good we are, but because that's an opportunity for a natural expression of love. And then the very next day, following that supper, following that night to remember, our Lord walked steadfastly, in spite of his stumbles, to his death on the cross. And three days later, he is raised, bringing the hope of redemption for us all. Love one another as I have loved you. Amen. We stand now to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please uh, be seated. I published the Bands of Marriage between Ben Trowbridge of the parish of Lowestoft St Andrew and Kelly Ann Twiggs, also of the parish of Lowestoft St Andrew, but with links to St Margaret's. This is for the third and final time of asking if any of you knows any reason in law why Kelly and Ben may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this morning to pray for our world, our church, our community, and our families and friends. We thank you for your mercy and grace, and we give thanks for the beauty and wonder of all your creation. Eternal God, we pray for the, all the nations of the world, but especially we pray for the people of Ukraine, for the families of those who have died and those who are injured, the people who are now displaced and refugees. We pray for all who bring aid and support for those in authority on all sides that a way may be found to bring about peace. We pray that all world leaders would be aware that all authority on earth comes from you and that they will be answerable to you for the decisions and plans they make. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for our world, for the beauty all around us, Help us to see your glory in all creation. We pray for your guidance as we care for the world and for your spirit's help to help us to be better stewards for the resources we have and teach us to protect every living thing on our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for our church family, for Jeff and Gerda, as they continue to guide us through our vacancy and all those who work hard to keep our church running smoothly. We thank you for all who have been elected and re-elected to serve us as church wardens and members of our PCC. We pray that they will be guided and inspired by your Holy Spirit as they lead us in the coming year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, your son Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to live out that command every day in every way we can, so that we may be your people in our community, to love and serve our neighbours and the people we meet in our lives every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for all our NHS staff, for the free availability of medication and hospital treatment. Help us to be mindful of all around the world who have to pay for the medication and treatment, especially those who can't pay. We pray for all who are awaiting treatment of any kind, 
and those who are in hospitals receiving treatment they need. In a moment of quiet, we name before God anyone on our minds this morning and all those who have no one to name them before God. May they be aware of your presence with them and know that you love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Loving God, we pray for those saddened by the death of a family member, loved one or friend, either recently or whose anniversary falls at this time of year. Help them to draw comfort from your love, the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we leave this place this morning, rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Margaret and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you stand, please, for the peace? <laughs> the risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw their Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a wave of peace. So we sing our offer to him now, 165.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. We sit or kneel as we turn to page 9 and prayer B. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and singing. We praise and we bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you, he broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did in him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us the day. deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died and rose again for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. We sing our closing hymn, number 748. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.